Metal Jesus, and I'm back again, feeling a bit nostalgic over one of my favorite consoles of all time. That is the mighty PlayStation 2. As a matter of fact, this is the console that got me back into console gaming. I had actually skipped the 90s and I was exclusively a PC gamer, but, but the PS2 impressed me. As a matter of fact, I've got over 200 games for it and I thought, you know, now's the perfect time to do a top 10, but how do you whittle over 200 games down to just 10? I mean, there's so many great games. Well, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you some honorable mentions as well. So if you don't see your favorite PlayStation 2 game in this video, well, hang out till the end. Let's take a look. Coming at number 10 is a military shooter, SOCOM 2. I was really surprised that I enjoyed SOCOM 2 as much as I did. I don't play a lot of military shooters, but this one is so well made. For me, it feels like they are really trying to go for a realistic military Navy SEALs game, and they mostly succeeded. As a matter of fact, I was replaying this game to capture all this footage, and I was amazed how well the game holds up even today. For me, the standout feature in this game has to be the computer controlled AI, the other Navy SEALs that are with you. It's amazing how you can play this game going through this really big twisting level and you as the player controlling the commander of these SEALs often won't take a shot for long periods of the level because you're giving commands to your other SEALs and they listen to you, they do what you say. It's really satisfying. Also, this game was fantastic in multiplayer. I played it a bunch on the PlayStation 2 and the PSP. Enemy sighted, 12 o'clock. Enemy sighted, he's moving. He's dead, all right. Coming at number nine is a racing game that I played every weekend with Drunken Master Paul for a long time, and that is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. Now, I have to admit that for years and years, if you were to ask me what my favorite arcade racing game was and Need for Speed game, I would always say Hot Pursuit 2. This game kicked ass on the PlayStation 2. It just had fantastic graphics. You got to play as the cop, and I just love the really long tracks in this game. They were varied, and they were just really long, winding tracks. Another thing I really enjoyed about Hot Pursuit 2 were these power-ups, these these things that you could do in the middle of a race that were really interesting. I don't, I don't think they've duplicated it in other games since. The ability to, to stop motion and swing the camera around your car to kind of get a better position of, of where your enemy is. Also the ability to, to kind of leap forward down the road and, and see what obstacles or what police barricades are coming up. Now maybe as time has gone on, other Need for Speed games have come out and have maybe eclipsed this, but Looking back, oh my god, I have such a, a fond memory of playing this game. The next game is divided among fans, but you know what? I loved Final Fantasy X. So when I first got my PlayStation 2, Final Fantasy X was one of those games where it really took me aback and blew me away. The graphics were just outstanding for the time. The voice acting was really great. The characters were interesting and fun. As a matter of fact, I named my cat after Riku. I mean, come on, that shows you how, how big of a fan I was. I'm also a traditionalist and I really enjoy turn-based combat. And Final Fantasy X is, you know, I think it's the last one to have a proper turn-based Final Fantasy style combat engine, which I really prefer. Now, admittedly, the big enemy in this game, Sin, is not the most interesting or compelling enemy in the Final Fantasy universe, I'll admit that, but I've played through this game twice and I love it every time. At number seven is a first person shooter that I played forever with Drunken Master Paul, and frankly, he'd kick my butt almost every time, but I still love it. Time Splitters 2. Mayday, Mayday, losing altitude. Ah yes, Time Splitters 2. Where do I start with this amazing first person shooting game? Well, first off, one of its great features is the fact that it travels through time. And that opens the game up into so many interesting places and level design. 
And the other thing about the Time Splitter series that I really like is the humor. You can tell that the people who made this are just having so much fun with the genre. And as I mentioned before, the multiplayer in this game is so much fun and it's wacky. You get to play all these crazy different characters and there's also a level builder. I mean, there's just so much to this game. You know, today, so many first person shooters are really serious. They're usually very military, rooted in reality, and uh, you know, they're fun, but I don't know, there's something about the Time Splitter series. Both 2 and also Future Perfect are just excellent games, and honestly, I really miss them. The next game I was really surprised how much I loved because it's the fourth in the series and they completely reinvented it, and that is Resident Evil 4. When Resident Evil 4 came out, I picked it up because, frankly, so many people were talking about how amazing it was. And thankfully, it did not disappoint. This game is so well made. For one thing, they vastly improved the controls. The old games had those kind of weird tank controls. That's completely gone in this game, and it's so much more intuitive. Also, the graphics, oh my god, they're just beautiful and scary and weird and creepy. I mean, <laughs> this game is just really cool. I really do think that Resident Evil 4 is one of the greatest survival horror games ever made. And, you know, sadly, and for some reason, it seems like the creators have sort of left this behind. And I don't know why that is. This is such a masterpiece. I'd love for them to go back and make another proper survival horror game. But, you know, that's besides the point. At least I will always have this one on the PlayStation 2. At number five is one of the most enjoyable and simplistic games of all time, and it's still a classic, Katamari Damacy. Oh man, what a, what a weird and wacky game this is. For those that don't know, the premise is, is that the King of the Cosmos accidentally destroys all the stars in the sky, and then he orders you to go down to Earth with this ball and roll it around, picking up things, building it up to build a star, to put it back into the sky. And you start very small. You're picking up little tiny specks, little things around the house, and then you slowly build up the ability to pick up bigger things, let's say cats, dogs, chairs, then you build up bigger things than that, and all of a sudden you're picking up furniture, you're picking up cars, Eventually in this game, oh my god, city blocks you're picking up. It's amazing how big this game gets. But it's always really fun, even to this day. As a matter of fact, this is the reason why Drunken Master Paul finally got a PlayStation 2, because he was coming over and playing this game all the time at my house. Next up is a platforming game that got to start on the PlayStation 2. That's the Ratchet and Clank series, and I had to choose, you know, which one do I go with? I mean, there was three of them on that system, and they're all fantastic. But the second one was near perfect, and that's Ratchet and Clank Going Commando. To talk about Ratchet and Clank is to really talk about the height and perfection of platforming during this generation, during the PlayStation 2 generation. These games got it perfect. And what they got right? Well, let's start with the level design. Every planet that you go to is always really interesting and fun to explore. And then there's the characters, Ratchet and Clank, which are hilarious. Well, as you can imagine, we've been pretty busy. After Drek's defeat, there were parades, press conferences, fancy dress balls. And the wiener roast at Al's. Oh yeah, that's... And then you have the weapons. And this is another highlight to this game. This is actually... I think one of the things that they really brought to the platforming genre was just these really interesting and wacky weapons that were really fun to level up and use. You know, I'll admit I had a hard time choosing to go with this one or the other excellent platforming series, Jack and Daxter, but ultimately I spent way more time in these games and I just love them to death. I think this one and also Up Your Arsenal are definite PlayStation 2 classics. At number three is one of the greatest arcade racing games of all time, and that is Burnout 3 Takedown. Burnout 3 takes the best parts of the first two Burnout games 
and really ups everything. This game is arcade racing perfection. For one thing, the game is blisteringly fast. I mean, it just goes and goes. It's actually, you're kind of afraid to blink sometimes when you play this game. And the graphics look great. I mean, they took Burnout 2, which was a pretty decent looking racing game, and they just, just made this game even more detailed. But where this game really shines for me is Crash Mode. Crash Mode is one of my favorite parts of the Burnout series. Basically, the premise is, is to race your car down into an intersection with, with all this other traffic, these, these cars and trucks, and cause as much damage as possible. It's the opposite of what you're typically trying to do in a racing game, and it's brilliant and so much fun. At number two is one of the greatest games of all time. It's one of the greatest series of all time, and it got its start on the PlayStation 2, and that is Grand Theft Auto. Now, which one do I choose? Well, I'm an 80s child, so I had to go with Grand Theft Auto Vice City. So when I say that I got its start on the PlayStation 2, what I mean is that I'm really talking about the 3D ones, the ones that, that had these huge 3D open worlds, like the third one, which, when it came out was amazing. But for Vice City, they took that even further. What they really did was inject the game with a ton of personality. This is a love letter to the 80s, from the cars to the music, which is excellent, by the way, I love Z-Rock, no surprise, to the location, which kind of reminds you of an episode of Miami Vice. I can't tell you how many months I spent playing this game. It's so weird, because actually, when capturing this footage, it's amazing when I drive around Vice City, I feel like I know the place. I mean, I know what every building is around each corner. It's just a testament into how amazing this game was. And now my number one PlayStation 2 game of all time. Now, this is gonna be a bit of a surprise for a lot of people because while it's a great series, I don't think many people consider it one of the greatest games of all time, but I don't care. I mean, for me, I played this game pretty much every day for a year when it came out. I loved SSX Tricky, but SSX 3 is perfection. Now, here's the thing. I've never snowboarded in my life. As a matter of fact, I don't even think I could snowboard if I wanted to. I'm too clumsy. And honestly, I don't really like sports games. I don't play many sports games. But for some reason, the SSX series, oh, it, just, it just hits me in all the right places. I guess it's because the SSX series is really a racing series that just happens to be on snow but it's completely arcade and over the top, and it has this really fantastic and deep trick system. Also, the controls in this game are spot on. I mean, they're just excellent. And I can't emphasize enough just how excellent the level design is. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite things about the third game is that you have an entire mountain to unlock. But more than that, all the individual runs are linked together. As a matter of fact, once you've unlocked everything, you can start at the very top of the mountain and ride in real time all the way down to the bottom with no load screens. It's amazing to do, it's so much fun. And it takes about a half an hour. So as you can tell, I love SSX3 and also Tricky is another classic too. So that's my list of top 10 PlayStation 2 games. And you know, it was really tough to whittle this down to top 10, so I'm gonna show you some honorable mentions here in a second. But I wanna talk about the PS2 for a second. Two things that I really, really love about it, especially as a collector, is that it also plays PlayStation 1 games. That's very handy if you're kind of limited on space. So I don't even actually have a PlayStation 1 set up. I just use the PlayStation 2, it works perfectly. Another thing I just wanna talk about really briefly was one of my favorite controllers, and that is the Logitech wireless controller. This thing actually is excellent. Feels great, uh, there's very little latency. If, uh, if, if you collect for the PlayStation 2, definitely try to find one of these. All right guys, well as always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel, and thank you for subscribing. Take care.